You're playing the opening and it's actually going well for you. But then the opening ends, and the middle game begins. Even though you have a strong position, you don't know what moves to play. You don't understand positional strategy. Hi, I'm Chess Page One. I specialize in helping beginners improve at chess and I diagnose you with a low L or mindset. But don't worry, I'm here to teach you. Typically, players with a low L or mindset learn the opening and then try to learn the middle game as a follow-up. Sounds like a logical order. But you're not just wrong, you're the opposite of right. Last week I spent hours hopping on voice chats with you guys, just to find out that almost everybody is confused about the middle game and more specifically about positional strategy. So I started investigating. And I found the solution. This is Capablanca, one of the greatest chess players of all time, with an 8-year streak of not losing a single game. He was known for his ridiculous positional understanding. Few people on earth have ever achieved his level of superior strategic dominance. And this is what he said about the middle game. You're pranking yourself and you will never understand positional strategy. Delete your chess account, no. There is no hope for you. Unless. His actual advice is this. In order to improve your middle game, you need to study the end game. Because the goal of the middle game is to achieve a good position for the end game. And if you don't know what end game position is winning, how are you supposed to know what position you're trying to achieve during the middle game? It's like driving a car without knowing your destination. That leaves us with one problem. There are 423 trillion end games. But of course I prepared a well-packaged guide that will elevate you beyond all the noobs who don't study positional strategy at all. But first let's talk about a meta problem. Strategy versus tactics. Strategy is your long-term plan for the game. Tactics are the specific moves, like finding a fork to win a piece. Chances are, the most important thing for your improvement are tactics. Strategy matters when you can play through an entire game without blundering and without missing simple tactics. Your strategy really doesn't matter at all when you blunder a rook. And chances are, 9 out of your last 10 losses, you didn't lose due to strategy, but due to tactics. I guarantee you, anyone under 2000 rating should put their main focus on improving the tactics. If you feel lost after the opening, that's completely normal. There are billions of options and understanding positional strategy is very, very difficult. And even more importantly, the basic foundation of everything are tactics. If you can't play 10 games in a row without blundering even once, then trying to learn strategy would be like trying to get a PhD in mathematics when you can't even solve 1 plus 1. So what we're going to do is this. You don't study the end game. I'll summarize the basic middle game principles that you would learn if you studied end games. It's not going to fix your middle game confusion entirely, but it will give you basic ideas. Then you go on and improve your tactics. I'm dropping a video on how to obliterate your opponents with tactics, which will quite frankly break chess in my very humble opinion, and only when you hit maybe 17, 18 or even 1900 rating, that is when you start to worry about strategy. Until then, you just play by the basic rules I give you and if you don't know what move to play, literally your only objective is to not blunder. Don't waste time thinking about the ideal move, make any move that's not a blunder and put the pressure of making a move back on your opponent. I looked up some statistics and they are very different in each study, but you can assume that the average player even in 1800 LO blunders around 3 pawns worth of material per game. That's the value of a whole freaking bishop in return for absolutely nothing. So if you can be the guy who just doesn't blunder and also spots the opponent's blunders, you can easily become a very good chess player without having to pull off some complex mastery game plan. Just don't blunder. This will make the big confusion fun. You don't have a game plan, your opponent doesn't have a game plan, everybody is confused. But confusion means high probability of blunders, and if you don't blunder, you will crush 99% of your opponents. Congratulations, you are now enlightened and smart. So here are the basic middle game principles that actually matter, you can use these but remember, whenever you feel like you need a complex strategy, just don't blunder. Subscribe if you want to see the tactics video that I'll make and now let's start with principle 1. End games are usually open positions, simply because there aren't many pieces on the board. And in open positions, bishops can attack across the entire board. If you were to study end games, you would quickly notice that bishops are usually better than knights. So in the middle game, you want to keep your own bishops and try to trade your knight for the enemy bishop. The next principle is about how to use your rooks. Rooks are extremely powerful in the end game. Look at this. This is called an open file because there are no pieces in the way. The rook can dominate it entirely. The rook is cutting off the enemy king. 
Now your king can easily capture the points. And the enemy rook is completely useless. Let's look at a middle game position. What we see is a rook occupying an open file. And since white occupied it first, the black rook can't move here anymore. White can even go here, attacking a weak pawn. It's not immediately game over but definitely a big disadvantage for black. So it's important to occupy the open file early in the middle game before your opponent does. But even more importantly, they play a major role in supporting advancing pawns. Promoting a pawn is probably about the single most powerful tactic in endgames at all. Which brings us to our next principle. If your opponent has an advanced pawn, blockade it with the knight. You can use any other piece, but the best one for this purpose is the knight. Trust me, there are many endgames with forced wins simply because of an advanced pawn. So make sure to block any advanced pawn in the middle game to avoid future trouble preemptively. Talking of pawns, let's talk about pawn structures. Probably one of the most confusing parts is how to set up your pawn structure. When should you push and when not? Something that will completely ruin your endgames is called weak squares. It's a square that cannot be protected by your pawns. Like this one. You can't possibly move a pawn in a way that will defend this square. Your opponent can position a knight and you have no way of removing it. Again you'll have to trust me, this absolutely ruins your endgame. So for the middle game, try to avoid weak squares. How? Well you gotta use your brain on this one. If you let your opponent push this pawn for example, it will create a weak square. So just stop him. Easy. Another principle for your pawn structure. You should try to avoid isolated pawns. It's a pawn with no neighbor pawns who could protect him. This dude is very easy to defend, but this one is very difficult to defend in the endgame. Let's say you have a pawn structure like this at some point. If you take the pawn, you create an isolated pawn on your side. So maybe don't. The same goes for double pawns. They're always difficult to defend later. There are two more general rules of thumb. Number 1. Pieces in the center occupy more space, which means higher chances of available tactics. There might be a cool tactic here, but probably not if the knight was over here. Number 2. And with this one please don't get ahead of yourself. You want to push your pieces, especially your pawns, to occupy more space and obtain better positions for your pieces. But always make sure to stay safe and protect your advanced pieces. Remember the most important rule, do not blunder. And before we end the video, let me reassure you that you will experience confusion and sometimes you will not have a specific plan, that is completely normal. Embrace the confusion by simply making any move that's not a blunder, then wait for your opponent to blunder and collect the piece. Your next step is to learn how to not blunder and how to spot tactics in a real game of chess, not just in puzzles. That's exactly what my next video will be about, make sure to subscribe and watch it if it's already online.